Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you all are fine, doing an excellent job, having fun, learning a lot and missing school. Anyways, before we close down for this lockdown period, we had started off with our uh, chapter Nature Landforms and we have completed mountains and plateaus. So today we begin with plains. What are plains? A plain children, as the word suggests, is a plain area, quite flat, uh, not steep, not high, okay, without much ups and downs, and which is generally flat. Sometimes it may be surrounded by a water body or by some other landforms like mountains. These plains may cover hundreds of square kilometers. They are found in every continent. More than half of the entire earth is covered by plains. Now, depending on how plains are covered, they have got slightly different names. If they are covered in grass, they are called grasslands. They have got many wild life, like the Argentine pampas. Sometimes they may be covered in trees and we call them forests like the plains of Mexico. Sometimes they may be covered in ice and snow like the tundras in the Arctic. And sometimes we may have them covered in sand with very, very less green vegetation. They are called deserts and they are certain parts of the Sahara. Now the question arises, how are plains formed? Based on the way they are formed, we can divide them into three different types. Structural, erosional and positional. When volcanic activity takes place, the volcano erupts out of the earth and it shoots right up. Then it lands back on the earth and it starts covering a wide area with the lava. When such a thing happens, then the lava starts spreading out over a huge area and it cools down. In this manner, the structural plains are formed, like the central lowlands of Australia. Sometimes ice and water may erode or wear away the soil. So when this happens, then this soil may again be taken by the ice or the water, right down, slowly moving downwards, and it may just deposit them in the low-lying land. It eventually piles up, creating a plain, like in Finland. Sometimes rivers and their tributaries may bring down fertile silt or alluvium from the mountains. All right? So when it comes down to the plains, then it starts overflowing or flooding. And it drops all the silt that it has brought into the land. When this happens, the water recedes. Okay, it has gone back into flowing like a river again. But the soil remains on land. This creates the depositional plains because the river has now deposited its load, like the Gangetic Plains of India. How are plains divided? They can be divided into four distinct variations, river plains, delta plains, coastal plains, and the lowest plains. As I explained earlier, when a river deposits its load, floods the surrounding area, it leads to the formation of a river plain. Again, when the river takes its load, reaches the sea or ocean, then it drops all its mud and silt into the ocean or the sea. Then the river cannot flow straight. It starts cutting through the load of mud and sand and silt. So when this happens, then this new land that has been formed is div divided into many different parts, forming a delta at the mouth of the river. This is called a delta plain. Now sometimes we have the sea um, or the ocean bringing in waves and this uh, these waves that come bring in lots of sand and silt so they flood
flood a huge area, come back, and so on and so forth. So, this kind of land that is there, which is quite flat, quite low, which is flooded, uh, not all the time, but at certain times of the day, or may not be flooded because the water has receded, but it is extremely low-lying and it is attached or adjacent to a sea coast. This kind of an area is called a coastal plain. Now sometimes sand is very very loose, alright? So the word loess actually means loose. L-O-O-S-E, not L-O-S-E, please remember. So when this loose sand is pushed around by the wind, it settles down in certain places. The wind takes the soil, throws it up in the air, and in certain places it piles up. And in certain places it's quite damp. So when this kind of a structure happens, then these piles are neither hills nor mountains. They're quite flat, but quite low, and not as high as hills or mountains. So these kinds of plains, as you can see in the picture, these are the lowest plains. Now the question arises, why are plains useful? Now you see children, the fertile soil that is brought down by the different um, activities of nature makes this area very, very fertile. So because of that, many different crops can grow. When people start growing crops, they start keeping animals. When animals and plants and crops are grown together, then more and more people find it very, very lucrative or beneficial to stay in certain places. So these plain areas become quite crowded. All right. So people start settling down. They make villages from a village to a town to a city. People start farming. They start having industries, their factories. They start manufacturing goods, they start growing a lot of different crops. So now, now that they have created such a lot of crops as well as animals to sell, as well as different products, they need means of communication. So they require railways to transport the goods. They require roads from which also they can transport and even travel. So planes, because they are flat, are like it's very very easy to make roads and railways here to make airports because people can um, since it's flat they can easily build all right so all these factors make communication very very easy so that brings us to the end of this subtopic planes i hope you all have understood it please go through the video properly i have gone into more detail than it's in the book if you have any questions please feel free to come back to me through my WhatsApp and I hope that you all are studying, enjoying yourselves. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye-bye.